Hello. It's nice to see you again. Um, welcome. If this is the first time you're visiting me. Um, thank you for visiting my channel. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for always trusting and always coming to my channel. Um, if you're first time on my channel, I'm going to uh, ask that you please click that subscribe button and then like and share this content on your social media platform. Tell your friends and colleagues about I need Scrum as that tell your friends about uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, it's about Scrum and Agile. Um, all right, with that said, let's dive into what we have for today. A lot of people have been reaching out to me and say, hey, JB, how is it that the JIRA and software development lifecycle correlates? What is the relationship between JIRA software and software development lifecycle, which is SDLC? So today I just want to explain that connection and relationship between the JIRA software as a tool and software development lifecycle. So if you don't know what JIRA is, don't worry, I'm going to explain what JIRA is. If you don't know what software development lifecycle is, don't worry. Exactly, I'm going to do the same. For um, for people who are not into tech or IT, um, this is an opportunity for you to understand what happens in an IT world. And also, if you are into IT or software or anything like that, perhaps today could be uh, either as an introduction or kind of an intermediary or advanced conversation on how Jira captures what happens in the software development lifecycle. With that said, let's dive in. All right, so what actually is Jira? Um, Jira is a project management software or tool. It's a project management software um, that is used to track, manage, and plan software production or projects. And in, in project management, there are different types of tools that could be used. So Jira is one of them. There are tons, I mean, if you go to Google and type project management tools or project management softwares, you will see different types of project management softwares. Uh, but for the purpose of this conversation, I'm going to limit it to a few of those, which as you can see on my board. So we have Jira, which is number one. We have Azure DevOps. So for people who are very much familiar with Azure DevOps, um, you can agree with me that the Azure DevOps board is also one of those tools that we use to track and plan and integrate. Um, issues in project management, especially in software development. We have uh, the GAN chat, we have the Zen Hub, we have Trello, we have Asana, we have Zoho. So for people or potential Scrum Masters who are preparing to go into interviews, perhaps your employer or potential employer might ask you, what kind of tools have you used in the past? So just to give you a heads up that there are different types of project management tools that Scrum Masters or even Agile coaches use in software development. So, I mean, every company, every organization, teams would use anyone that works for them, depending on the skills, skill set that they have, right? There are some companies that use uh, Jira. There are some companies that use Azure DevOps. There are com companies that use Zen Hub or even Trello. Right, so it depends on the number of factors that would contribute towards those choices. It could be because of the subscription, it could be because of the skills, I mean, tons could go on and on and on. But I'm just trying to elaborate on the different types of project management tools. Um, and then what could you use those project management tools for? Um, you could use them for reporting. As a Scrum Master myself, at the end of every sprint, what is sprint? Sprint is the period in time that the development team used to do the coding, right? Is a period in time where the actual requirements, those business requirements are turned into values. So let's look at it that way. It's always between one, one week to four weeks and according to the Scrum guide. So you could use the JIRA or any of those um, project management tools, but for the purpose of this conversation, I'm gonna limit, limit it to JIRA to give a report. So at the end of every sprint, the Scrum master uses uh, the, the, the JIRA to capture the KPI or the metrics on how that sprint went. So you use that to give detailed reporting. It is also used for integration. It is used for collaboration. It is used for time tracking, especially for project managers who want to really figure out how much the team spends or how much it costs for, you know, for each sprint or each iteration. 
And then you could also do that, use the JIRA for tax management, just for you to track um, how things are moving from in progress to when it's done, done. Okay, so, um, and then if you really understood this idea of JIRA, then what is really software development lifecycle? It could also be called application development lifecycle. So whichever one you hear or anywhere, just know that it's basically the same thing. It's what it really is about is that is a systematic process for building software, right? Is a way or a process that is set in place just to make sure that the dev team is building a quality and correct software product for customer satisfaction. So it is a step-by-step -step approach on what needs to go in before another um, so that the team can be able to come up with quality software. So that's about software development lifecycle. And it has different stages. <clears throat> so the next board, I'll be sharing with you what are the stages in software development lifecycle so that we can really see how it relates with JIRA or the workflow in the, on the JIRA board. Okay, so we basically have four stages, seven, seven stages of uh, G, uh, software development lifecycle. Um, there are different uh, resource materials that might give you different idea or you know explanations, but all of them are gearing towards these seven. First is about requirements gathering or requirement collection and analysis, whichever one it is that you want to prefer to use. It is about you know talking about the project scope, you know, trying to look at things like timeline, things like budget, things that are all encompassed in the project, right? It's about the time where stakeholders and the team members especially project managers will be having that conversation with the clients. It could be internal client, it could be external client, to understand what the project is all about. So that is at the stage of that requirement collection and analysis. And then from that, the team transitions or the state goes into the visibility study, right? We have to define documentation and, and what the software needs. That is the visibility studies. And we have five types of visibility checks, uh, which is outside of the scope of these conversations. So uh, I would encourage you to go to any resource materials that talks about the visibility or the five studies of visibility studies so that you might have detailed information on that. And after that visibility study, we go into the designing phase. The designing phase is where uh, we have system and software design documentations uh, all prepared. Um, remember, if we have to go back again to to the 12 agile principles where it talks about uh, working software or when we have to go back again to the four uh, agile manifesto, it talks about working software over comprehensive doc documentation. So it kind of draws our attention to you. There are things that really happens, right? It doesn't mean that comprehensive documentation is not relevant in Scrum or in the agile world, but the idea is that we want something that is really working, right? Right, so that's the primordial information that should be kept at the forefront of what we do in an agile world or in Scrum. So be that as it may, what this stage is all about is to tell you that in the designing stage, we have to document a lot of things, right? Because we have to, you know, review them as the development work starts. From the designing, we now go into the coding, right? I mean, the coding part is where the developers do the or write the codes using the specified or agreed on programming language. We know that there are different types of programming languages, right? So uh, there, are, there is Python, there is C++, um, there is other programming language, which is outside of the scope of this conversation. So I could encourage you to also go on the any resource material you might have and look up different coding or writing programming languages. Um, from the writing phase, now we go into the testing. Right, there are different types of testing. Uh, we have unit testing, we have um, SIT, we have different types of testing that happens in that phase. It depends on what the team wants to focus on, but the idea is after the coding, then the testing part happens. What happens in the testing is to figure out if there is any kind of bug or defect, right? If there is any kind of bug or defect, now the tester would push it back to the developer who will refactor those code and then push it back again to the tester who will do another round of text, 
right? It could it could be regression testing, whatever type of test it is. It's just a way of trying to make sure that it meets the customer's expectation. Then from testing, we go into installation or deployment. We are deployed in different types of environments. Some people deploy to SIT. Some people deploy to the to the uh, production environment. So most of the times, the team is always deployed deploying to the production environments. The production environment is where the user can begin to use some of the functionalities of the software. Um, from there, and we go into the maintenance. Have you ever wondered sometimes if you log into a website, it tells you like, it gives you like that block uh, text box saying that we are going to a maintenance mode. That's what happens in software, right? We have things like uh, upgrade. We have things like, uh, um, uh, activities that happen in, in, in the maintenance include bug fixes, upgrade, and enhancement. These are three major activities that happens in the maintenance. So these seven stages just tells you what really goes on in software development. But then the question becomes, how does the Scrum team capture all of these? If not all, but most of these in the Jira software. So sit tight, and then the next slide, or the next part, I'm going to share with you what really happens and how it's Scrum Master does what he does um, in the software environment. All right, so now we have this um, a demo right before us. And if you look at this board, uh, you see that we are still in the anal analytics point. The analytics is where we kind of capture the metrics on how that has gone. This is not a Jira board. This is just like a demo of what a Jira board looks like. Uh, I would encourage you to go to atlassian.com or go visit Atlassian. Atlassian is the, is the owner of Jira. You can sign up. There is a free version for Jira. You can play around it and see what it feels like. Or if you feel con 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 um, conversant with Azure DevOps, you can always go and sign up on a free version of Azure DevOps, and you can play around it, right? You don't, don't be afraid, it doesn't bite, right? So just go over there and then sign up and see what it looks like. Even if you are planning to become a Scrum Master or you are even, you know, getting there, you have done your certification, you're not sure on what it looks like, just create a free version, you could always play around it. If you're not sure what to do, you know, drop a comment in the comment section, and then you send me email uh, via info at Anis scrummaster.com and then we can be able to have that conversation. So here it seems to uh, capture how this whatever projects that was, how it went. If you look at, you see the charts, you see the bar chart, you see the pie chart. Um, this is basically what a Scrum Master does at the end of every sprint to go to the sprint report and then look at the, how the bond down chart or, or other types of charts that are there in order to explain how that sprint has gone and also to improve or how the team can improve their performance. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play the clip and then we can analyze it and I will explain to you how that happens or how the Jira tracks what I just explained previously in terms of software development life cycle. So sit tight and then we can do that together. Just one second. All right, so that is an overview about what happens. Um, that is, this is just a little demo, uh, about 14 seconds. A little demo that demonstrates on what or the flow of what happens on the Jira board. So the first one is, as I play the clip again, I'm going to explain what is going on there. So the first clip is about capturing metrics like the reports. We understand that. Uh, the Jira is used as, I mean, I already explained that the Jira is used for detailed reporting. So this phase is where the Scrum Master will use the Jira to capture reports, right, on how things has gone. Perhaps proposing or encouraging teams on what they could do in order to improve their performance, if really they are going beyond their velocity, going below their velocity. And if their velocity is okay, then they can maintain their velocity. All right, so the second um, slide 
and or the second clip or what I would say the second part of this demo is about the board. I mean, if you look at the board here, you can see that we have things in the new, we have in the in progress, and we have uh, in the review, right? In the Jira board, we have, you know, different columns or swim lines, as you may call it. We have to do, we have in progress, and we have testing, and we have done. And again, you can always customize it. There are team members that would do to do in progress, um, blocker, testing, deployment, and done. These are different ways of tracking things as they appear in the coding or the code repository. For example, we have what is called the GitHub or GitLab. The GitHub is the code is a code repository where the developers are actually doing the coding. Then the Jira gives us that visibility or that way of tracking what happens. Right. So let's look at it as the Jira is like the front end, while the GitHub is like the back end. Right. If I have to make an analogy, if you go to a restaurant and then you place your food, you are seated by the waiter or the waitress, and then you make your orders, you don't know what happens in the kitchen. Right. The back end is like the kitchen in software development. The back end is what the developers do behind bars. You don't see it. Right, just like what happens in the kitchen where the, the chefs are doing their work. As soon as the food is ready, the, the, the waiter or the waitress will be able to provide and serve you your meal. And then you eat your meal and then you you pay and then you you take your leave. The same thing happens in software. The developers do the actual work in the in a in a in a in a, in a background called GitHub, which captures all of those. But the Jira gives us that representation or that visibility of what really happens in such an environment. So this board we are seeing right now, let us know what is really happening at each point in time. We see the new, and then we can see tiny images of what looks like emojis of people. What those means are that these tasks, or in Jira it is called issues. We have different types of issues. These issues are assigned to different types of developers, right? So every developer has, a, has an issue assigned to him or her. And as the sprint progresses, those issues are moved from one column to another just to show, tell us how much progress these guys are making. You can see you can see how the task was dragged from one column to the other just to show us what happens. All right, so now the other tab is about list of things that the team is hoping to do. In Scrum, we have what is called the Sprint planning. We also have what is called the backlog, product backlog. We have items in the product backlog which are called product backlog items, also called PBIs. So the backlog is like a container where all the requirements, either as enhancements, either as user stories, either as tasks, are all keyed in. If you don't know what what the user story is, I would encourage you to visit the content I made about Scrum or Agile terminologies. That would help you to understand these technical terms I'm using. I'm using. Um, this is like a backlog of what happens in software developments, right, where those items are all identified and assigned to developers. As a Scrum master, I don't assign tickets or issues to my developers. They assign themselves based on their individual capabilities or skill set. Because in a Scrum environment, Self-organization or self-management is a key thing. So as soon as a developer feels comfortable to or feels like he or she has a skill set, then you can put in the name of the developer. But in terms of saying, for example, Philip, can you work on this? Or Philip, please work on this. That is not the that is not the responsibility of the Scrum Master to do. All right, so the last tab talks about the GAN chart. I mentioned about the GAN chart, about the different project management tools. So the GAN chart is majorly like giving us, if I have to use a, a technical term about uh, the product roadmap, what milestones are going to be achieved, right? Each quarter or each sprint. So the GAN chart is used you know, to give that accomplishment as the sprint or the project progresses. Now, the calendar um, in Scrum, we, we used to have what is called team capacity. Uh, you want to know who is available each sprint. Uh, some, some, some team member might be on vacation. Some people might be on sick leave. Some people might be on um, maternity 
maternity leave or paternity leave, or they might be on vacation or conference, or they might travel or whatever it is. Using the calendar is one of the ways to capture those information so that when you are doing your sprint planning as a scrum master, you can really factor those in so that you can know how much the team can commit to each sprint, right? So those are basically uh, what this little demo is all about. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, don't worry. I need Scrum Master got your back. So what you could do is to send an email at info at I need Scrum Master .com. Or you could always visit my website, www.ineedscrummaster.com. You can book a free consultation and we can be able to uh, identify at what stage you are in terms of Scrum and Agile. Uh, there's an ongoing class um, for beginners or even for Scrum Master that want to uh, advance their experience in terms of Scrum and Agile. All you need to do is either you send me email at info at an .com, or you can always book a free consultation on my website and then we can be able to have a conversation. If you're looking for a place to enroll in Scrum, I bet you know the right place. All you have to do is to go to inescrummaster.com or you can send me email info at inescrummaster.com and we can have that conversation. Um, if you know of a colleague or you are a manager or you are in a position where you think that team members might be able to take a Scrum class, it's for six weeks. It's not for 36 weeks, it's for six weeks class where uh, inescrummaster.com is going to train you from the theoretical part of Scrum to the practical part of Scrum and to the implementation implementation part of Scrum. All you need to do is send an email to me and we can be able to get that going. All right, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for, uh, you know, I hope that this finds, I hope that this finds you well. Uh, if you have questions, please put that in the comment section. If you like this content, please, I bet you uh, like this, uh, share it on your social media platforms and together we can all be Scrum masters or we can do Scrum. Scrum is not just used for software development. You can use Scrum to plan your day-to-day -day activities. If you are curious about, about how, all you need to do is visit my website or send me, info, or send me email and then we can be able to get that going. Thank you so much. In the meantime, I hope you stay well. Bye for now.